This is the start of it right here. This is the start of something big. I want you to pound somebody. First play right down their throat. And the season is underway. <laughs> this one's a collision. An incredible run by Clinton Portis. And Michael Bennett is streaking for another touchdown. Picture perfect opening drive. Not one mistake. Takes his one play, and the Hawks stop him again. Isaac Bruce, a one-handed grab. That was a work of art. Going for it all. David Carr to Billy Miller, the first touchdown in Texas history. Rock and roll. Offense. Got work. Defense. Got work. Special teams. Got Chargers heart. Get it tight, get it tight, stay like a man. What a comeback, what a show of character. The Treadlock Demon pads his numbers. Run, William, run! We've been waiting for it to break the big one, but he saved it for the right time. What a tremendous play by the Bills. We are peaking at the right time. And right now, there's going to be no looking back. The Raiders have won the AFC West again. The kick is good, and the Patriots win. He's not only the best quarterback on the team, he's probably the best running back. Looking for Shockey, and he's got it for a touchdown. Pandemonium, the Giants are going to the playoffs. Good teams find a way to win, man. And you won today. A shocking championship team in the New York Jets. It's caught your vision. Go, you go, go, Joe. Go, Joe. You go, Joe. Go, Things better change for the Eagles in these next 15 minutes. That's intercepted. Go home, Eagle fans. Unthinkable. 
unthinkable, unimaginable. The two-decade drought is over, America. The Oakland Raiders have won. The silver and black are back. The Buccaneers are going to the Super Bowl. We're underway from San Francisco. There's already a flag on the field. Wow, wow, wow. Play a game on the kicking team. What? Delay of game on the kicking team. What? How do you do that on the opening kickoff? That's the first time that's been called in this league in 47 years. On the road to the Super Bowl, it was easier to delay a kickoff than it was to derail a kickoff return. To the 10, left sideline to the 15, has a lane to the 20, still on his feet to the 30, cuts it back to the 40. Midfield 50, Morton caught from behind, now breaks a tackle. 2002 saw an NFL record 39 kickoffs and punts return for touchdowns. Very short, taken at the 15-yard line. Dantzler up quickly, 25, ran into his own man, Wiley at the 30, and gave yards back. He's still Look going, actually. 25-yard line, a stiff arm, 30 right sideline, 35 still alive, 40 stepped out of bounds. He's oh, down to no, midfield. He did, he did not step out of bounds, and he's going to score. Woodrow Dantzler's going to bounce off like a <laughs> pinball. And Beating the kick coverage was exciting. That may have been the most unbelievable kickoff return run I have seen. But an ability to beat the clock was essential. More than half of all regular season games were decided by eight points or less. Winning often required a strong finishing kick. You gotta finish it now. It doesn't count unless you finish it. Look at me. Finish this thing. Keep your lanes and do your job. There's no better feeling in this game than to take the last drive down, score a touchdown, and win the game on the last drive. That's a damn good feeling now. All right? So let's go do it, huh? Ten seconds left in regulation. Culpepper back to pass into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Randy Moss! They're going for two, Joe. This is great. Mike Tyson, I love it. Vikings going for a two-point conversion to win it. It's a bad snap. Dante picks it up. Dante hits it. Yeah! The Vikings became the first team in NFL history to win by converting a two-point play. The unpredictability of sudden death may have prompted Minnesota's bold gamble. In a season of weird endings, overtime had its share of chaos. Top two with a punt. They come after it. Get... He's going to be tackled in the end zone. There's a touchdown on the interception. This game's over. The Saints win by six. A record 25 games went into overtime, including one that resulted in a split decision. Maddox is back. He steps up, and here's the rainbow. Whoa, whoa. And it's down to the end zone, and there are people down there. He's got it. Come and it's close. has got it, but he's not short in the end zone. Of the goal line. Oh. He's short of the goal line. Plexico Burris had it, but he didn't cross the goal line. And this game ends as a 34-34 overtime time. This year of furious finishes was personified by the Cleveland Browns. In their season opener, the Browns had a win virtually secured. Then, in the final seconds, Victory vanished like a puff of smoke. Four seconds left. Green back to pass. He's going to have to throw the Hail Mary. He's getting rushed by Dwayne Run, And he got stuck. But he flipped the ball back to John Tate. Tate running down the field to the 50, to the 40, to the 35. And Devin Bush comes over and wipes him out. And there's a flag down as the clock runs down to zero. Dwayne Run took his helmet off and threw it when he thought that they had Trent Green down and the game was over. Dwayne Rudd was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct, a bizarre twist that sent the Browns toppling to defeat. Butch Davis' Cleveland Browns give a game to the Kansas City Chiefs here to open up the 2002 season. But the Browns demonstrated a flair for fighting back. They showed plenty of punch in those do-or-die moments that defined their season. Lacking a true star, Cleveland thrived instead on teamwork and timely plays, many of which required extraordinary effort. Couch rolls to the right on a play-action fake. He gets hit. He throws into the end zone, and they come back and make the catch. Unbelievable. In week three, with just two and a half minutes remaining, Cleveland began to erase a 14-point deficit. Any chance of scoring the tying touchdown rested on recovering an onside kick. Dawson into it, and then he pooches it up the sideline for North Cut, and he makes the catch on the sideline, and the Browns have it! The Browns have the ball! With 
just 12 seconds left on the clock, the Browns sent the game into overtime. Cut makes the catch at the five, swerves away and goes in for a touchdown! Snap is back, ball is down, kick is up, on its way, it's good! What? And the Browns have won it in overtime! What a comeback, what a show of character! These new era cardiac kids never cringed at crunch time. Nine of the Browns' 16 regular season games were determined in the final minute or in overtime. He needs some room to let one fly, and he does. High in the air. Morgan's going to battle for the ball, and he's got it in the end zone. Touchdown! He got it! Quincy Morgan got it! Unbelievable Hail Mary! Quincy Morgan took the ball away from Fernando Bryant, and the Browns win! At one point, the Browns were two and four. But going into the season's final game, they had an outside chance to make the playoffs. Against Atlanta, they again drew on their down-to-the-wire determination. Trailing by six points going into the final quarter, the Browns scored a pair of touchdowns to take the lead. On second down, they give it to Green. Green stutter step, he's through. First down, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Run, William, run. 20, 50, 10, 5, touchdown. But it took a last gasp goal line stand by Butch Davis's defense to ensure victory and help the Browns earn their first playoff berth since 1994. Here's Vic on third and goal. Gordon didn't get in. He got stuck right there at the goal line. A big hit by Dwayne Rudd. Vic takes it. He gives it to Warren Dunn. He got hit. He didn't get in. was for today, to know how to handle the pressure with composure, to trust each other, to make the plays. Congratulations to you guys. In the 2002 NFL season, there were more points and more touchdowns scored than ever before. And the pressure on the players and coaches seemed to increase as well. Squeeze, 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 squeeze! Shoot, shoot! Shoot! Oh, sh**! Our ball, our ball. No one blew it, Dan! No one blew it, Dan! No one blew it! Who made that call? Listen, I got unsportsmanlike on 99 for being in the way. I ran into him, that's a foul. Get your guys what? back. I'm not running into anybody else. He's got DPI. You know, on this league, I tell you what. You guys take your job too serious, Boris. They know what to do. We need to coach our players. Don't coach the officials. Just coach our players. That's the best thing to do. The officials know what they're doing. We're gonna hold on, on your team. And the person. And we got an unsportsmanlike after the play. So we're gonna walk 10, then we're gonna walk 15 and give you a first down. Oh, thanks. All right. Appreciate that. You're Thank a good you. man. I'll get you out to send you a Christmas card. <laughs> well, what do you think about this start, fellas? Yeah, holy smoke. So much for my pregame speech, huh? Wow. This ass skipper. Wow. Get him out of the game. Get him out. Get him out. It's freaking ridiculous. Get out of the game. This kid is lost. Don't even put him in there. You're lost. You make a face at me, I'll cut you right now. We're going to go back to lighting a firecracker under your ass, son, because I'm going to tell you what, I ain't standing for that. You cost us a first down, damn it. Let me find out whose fault that was. That mother ain't going to be around Monday. That's a silly mistake. What the f what are we doing, man? A bunch of amateurs tonight. Hey, do I gotta, am I, am I being too hard on these guys, Jay? That's right, you can't give anybody on this team any, like, good praise, because they don't know how to handle it. Nah, that play's over with. That play's over with. You gotta get back out and make it happen, okay? It's up to you. Lock it away and run the way you're capable of. This is gonna get ugly, man. This is good, this could get ugly, fellas. This could get real ugly right here. It got ugly early for the New York Jets, who were outscored 102 to 13 in three September losses. Last time, fires deep sideline, intercepted, picked off. He's going to go all the way. At midseason, the Jets were dead last in the AFC East, but head coach Herman Edwards refused to let his team quit. This is what the greatest thing about sports is: you play to win the game. 
Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. Yeah, I'm good, man. You don't just keep fighting, man. Keep coaching. <laughs> That's all you can do. Y'all heard what Coach Herman said. We got to fight today. It's just the way the league is, man. It's ups and downs. If you can get a roll going, you get back in it again. The Jets got rolling against the San Diego Chargers, who came into the game with the best record in the AFC. You got to keep believing. This is just one win, but it's significant, very significant, because now, guys, we got something to build on. We got that feeling now how to win again. Chad Pennington replaced Vinny Testaverde at quarterback, and he answered all the questions about his readiness by winning nine of his 13 starts and finishing as the league's top-rated passer. Do the little things, man. Keep believing we're going to be fine. We're just starting to become a good football team. Hey, man, we ain't done. We're going to get better. Here, turn over here. Get your turnover, boy. It'd be big now. One turnover. Just one turnover. Right here. Deep sideline right from Moss in the end zone. It's intercepted. Booyah! The Jets pulled together to win four straight games in November and turn their season around. He goes play action. Rolling to his left. Fakes at the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown. What a run by Chad Pennington on fourth and goal. Well, I'm going to tell you what kind of football team you are, man. You're a good football team, but you just beat a good football team. Because good teams find a way to win, man. The Jets cleared every hurdle to get back into the race. But a costly stumble against Chicago left them with just the slimmest hope of making the playoffs. On the final week of the regular season, the Jets needed not only to win their own game, they also needed a New England win over Miami to claim the division title. Snap, the ball down, the kick up, the kick is on the way. Adam Vinatieri has just kicked the field goal to give the New England Patriots a victory, and now the Jets have all to play for with the AFC East on the line in this game. With their fate now in their own hands, the Jets blew away Green Bay to become the first team ever to come back from a 2-5 and five start and win a division championship. One week later, the Jets rode that emotion to the most one-sided postseason victory in franchise history. said the season was over. You know what? He didn't believe it. Circumstances are always in your way, man. But just believe in each other, man. You did that. And that's why you won a division. Yeah. Yeah. And the home of the Jets! <laughs> 2002 was a season that flew in the face of one of the most sacred tenets of the game. Oh, this is gone! Wow! Priest Holmes, he's diving. Yes, he's got it. Touchdown. In the NFL, it is said that you must be able to run the ball to be successful. But in 2002, only one of the league's top 10 rushers, the Giants' Tiki Barber, would go to the playoffs. In fact, the most exciting runner of all wasn't even a running back. In his first full year as a starter, Atlanta's Michael Vick set a single-game rushing record for quarterbacks with 173 yards against the Vikings. In an NFL season filled with great individual performances, no one could match the stir created by the Falcons' phenom. He eludes a tackle, and there he goes. 35, oh, runs away for one, 25, 20. Look at him go! Oh, my! What a superstar! All we need to do is get Mike to back the ball, baby. That's it. Let him work his magic. In Green Bay for the first round of the playoffs, Vic showed plenty of substance to go with his style. Against the heavily favored Packers, he led Atlanta to an upset victory and a place in history as the Falcons became the first visiting team ever to win a postseason game at fabled Lambeau Field. You 
make history today. Maybe. And you did it 22 years old. Now stop and think about that. How many people make history at 22 years old? It's wonderful. At the ripe age of 31, the Steelers' Tommy Maddox also made history by starting a game for the first time in 10 years, the longest span between starts in league history. A former first-round bust who bounced around two other pro leagues, Maddox came off the bench to turn the Steelers' season around after an 0-2 start. Maddox put it right there. Tommy Maddox is red hot. But in week 11, his season of redemption and his career were almost ended. Underneath that Randall out, and Maddox is hurt behind the play. Maddox is down and motionless. Maddox suffered a frightening injury that left him temporarily paralyzed. But just days later, vowed to play again. This is what I do, and this is what I love to do. I've been through a lot to get to this point where I'm at. The support I've got from the fans has been overwhelming. I'm anxious to get back on the horse. Maddox eventually returned, and Pittsburgh won five of its final six games to capture the AFC North title. In the playoffs, the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year would direct one of the great postseason comebacks in recent memory, rallying the Steelers from a 17-point deficit against the Browns. Throws it to the back of the end zone. It's caught for the touchdown! While Maddox may have written the most inspired story of 2002, no player put his signature on the season with more flair than the 49ers' Terrell Owens. He falls on this side and just makes the catch touchdown. A tremendous adjustment on the play, and the Niners have the lead again. Is that a pin? Yeah, he has a pin in his sock, and he pulled it out and autographed the ball. That's a first. Owens cultivated a bad boy image. I told you! They hate to love me! Garcia. But backed up his bravado with a league-high 13 touchdown catches. Oh, it's unbelievable! Oh, what a bonanza! Other receivers may have caught more balls, but no one did so with more style. Oh, my goodness. He did not just take the pom-poms and start cheering. He is awesome, I gotta tell you. I think that's fun. I can't stand myself! But Owens wasn't 2002's only shock jock. Shock, he's spinning ahead for the first down. Why didn't he jump up now? And Rudder puts his long hair to the sideline and said, look at me, everybody, how pretty I am. There was nothing pretty about rookie Jeremy Shockey in the open field. Like Owens, his fiery persona helped his team reach the playoffs, where the two would meet in a game for the ages. Swings it right, pass complete, up to the 35, running out of a tackle is Terrell Owens, no one's getting him. <laughs> 76 yard touchdown play, and this is going to be all sorts of fun. Collins to throw, swings it right, he's got Shockey at the 10, bounces off a tackle at the 5, dives for the end zone, and they say he's down at the half inch line. Takes the snap, looks left, lobs it left, looking for Shockey. He's, He's got, got it for a touchdown right over the defender. We're not stopping, baby. We're not stopping, Shockey. The Giants jump to a big lead with a blistering aerial attack. These corners cannot deal with Amani Tumor. He is killing them. Three touchdown catches. Toward the end of the third quarter, the game appeared all but over. Teal, Teal. Garcia. But in a season of great individual efforts, Gets inside the tent, it, away. it was as a team that the 49ers would stage the second greatest comeback in playoff history. This game is not over yet. Uh, this is really getting interesting now. Wow, 38 to 33. How about this? One minute to go. Throws for the end zone. have erased a 24-point deficit. They lead 39-38. Six seconds to go. So now it comes down to the field goal try by Matt Bryant. 
the former pawnbroker, out of football for several years, ready for the snap by Junkin. Remember, the last snap from Trey Junkin was low. Here it comes, it's another bad snap, and now they're going to have to try to throw for it. In the end, the wildest of wild card games finished with the wildest of plays. He's going to throw it into the end zone. There's a giant there. It's incomplete. Are they going to call interference? Or was it an illegal man downfield? Game is over. Game is over. 49ers win. That might be one of the greatest comebacks in playoff history right there. Andy Reid has always been a man with a plan. All right, we have a new game plan coming in. But the plan never involved a quarterback with a broken ankle. Donovan McNabb played 57 minutes on that broken ankle, and the Eagles were never the same. They were better. In the week following McNabb's season-threatening injury, Reid never mentioned it to his team, because a man with a plan usually has a plan B. Back goes Denver. He's pumping. He is going deep. In for a touchdown is Todd Pinkston. Big problem. Detmer's hurt. Detmer is seriously hurt. Oh, wow. Of course, if a man's got a plan B, it's a pretty good bet he's got a plan C. As the Eagles won four straight games behind third-string quarterback A.J. Feely, Andy Reid's plan became stunning reality. In the era of the quick fix, the Eagles had built a powerhouse. It's time to unleash the dogs of war. Go forth into battle and claim your prize. With a defense that led the league in sacks and sent three-fourths of its secondary to the Pro Bowl, the Eagles were football's most complete team. It's a fake, and it goes on the pitch. Running up the football wide open, getting a block is Brian Dawkins. Dawkins across. For the first time in team history, Touchdown! the Eagles won the NFC East Division in back-to-back -back seasons. Give yourself a little hand. Yeah. Give yourself a little hand. Yeah. Two in a row. Hey, you know what, though? A little more history to make, though, right? The road to the Super Bowl would run through Philadelphia in the final season at Veterans Stadium. He is firing. It's intercepted. It's intercepted by Bobby Taylor. Down the right side, to the 10, to the 5. Bobby Taylor for the touchdown. Everything was going just according to plan for the NFL's Coach of the Year. In McNabb's return, the Eagles ensured that the last football game ever played at the Vet would be a championship game. And the Eagles, for the second year in a row, have advanced to the NFC Championship. Great job. Business isn't done, though, right? We all know that. Hey, that's right. We're starting with one more, though, next week. In Tennessee, Jeff Fisher's plan had a familiar ring. Beat your opponent, literally. Knock their ass in the dirt. Let's go. Leave somebody laying on the ground. His message was clear, but the call wasn't quite getting through. The Titans lost four of their first five games. With Eddie George struggling to recover from foot problems, Fisher was forced to dial a different number. McNair. Play action, runs into the blitz, gets away, spinning it down, he gets away! McNair absorbed so much punishment that by season's end, he could not practice. But on game day, no player did more for his team than number nine. McNair breaks the tackle. Ten, five, three, four, touchdown, Titans! Well, let's stand by the out. Play as a team here. Play as a team. Let's together, together. McNair personified a team whose season began so ugly that the owner publicly questioned whether Fisher was being outcoached. But Fisher never set out to win pretty. By season's end, his appearance had changed, but his message hadn't. Let's light somebody up now. Come on. Come on, get off the blocks and tackle. Knock your ass in the dirt. Let's go. Leave somebody laying on the ground. 
the Titans scratch their way to 10 wins in their final 11 games. Not a single player made it to the Pro Bowl, but the Titans entered the playoffs, the hottest team in football. It's ours to win. It's our time now. Their battle with the Steelers was a microcosm of the Titans' topsy-turvy season. Eddie George left the game with a concussion, and the Titans' hopes appeared to be slipping away. 30 minutes! This is it! 30 minutes! The Steelers pounded Steve McNair and bloodied his thumb, but they never did get him. As he had all season, the NFL's toughest player put the league's toughest team in position to fight another day. Remember, remember where we were at one and four and where you are now, okay? Because it makes it that much sweeter. It's that much sweeter. Hey, take your pads off. And I don't want to break the other thumb, but catch that one, man. <laughs> the battered quarterback and his grizzled coach had proven that winning ugly could be a thing of beauty. Let's go tonight, Tampa! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let it roll! Let it roll! Let it go! Let it out of your ass! My name is John Gruden, and I am the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When Chucky took over the Bucks, he changed the face of football in two towns. Bill Callahan followed in John Gruden's footsteps in Oakland, but this was far from a messy transition. Callahan had been the Raiders' offensive coordinator for four years. He made a big splash with the players and with owner Al Davis, who likes to be prepared for rainy days by stockpiling his team with proven veterans who have weathered NFL storms. Hey, you guys look scared down there! Don't be afraid, Jerry! Hey, who you think you're talking to, rookies? <laughs> you're not talking to rookies here, my man. <laughs> the milestones accumulated in Oakland. Tim Brown caught his 1,000th pass while Jerry Rice became the league's all-time leader in yards from scrimmage and scored his 200th touchdown. But it was the man throwing all those passes who really put up big numbers. League MVP Rich Gannon threw for over 4,000 yards and set a single-season record for completions. Gannon back, looks end zone, pressured, and he's going to run, cut back in the middle, breaks a tackle! Pretty quick feet for a guy who's 37 years of age. The quickest feet in the league might have belonged to Charlie Garner, who often made opponents swing and miss. Oakland's defense, however, usually hit its mark. And for the third straight year, the Raiders reigned in the AFC West. In the divisional playoffs, the Jets' wounded quarterback of the past saw the Raiders harness New York's current young gun. The best quarterback on the field this day was Rich Gannon. Five-step drop, Gannon, pump fake. Now going to loop one left for Porter, who's open, got it! Touchdown! John Gruden's former quarterback had become a master of his position. Gruden's new passer, however, was still a work in progress when the season began. Cardinal in motion, dropping branch, arch, left, picked off! will score their first point the first half all season. Come on, man. If I call pass 94 punch X deep cross, it's a very simple play. There's a concept. It's a deep cross, and then it's a flat. Don't just start running all over. You know what I mean? Are you up here or not? Not everyone was so willing to follow Gruden's lead. Oh, man, you got to get the ball in my hands. I ain't touched that ball since the first quarter, man. It's crazy. The new Bucks looked strikingly similar to the old ones. Tampa was winning ugly. Mike Allstott occasionally ran over an entire team, 
and the defense prevented points at a near record pace. But although they looked the same, there was an intense new spirit emanating from the Bucks' sideline. What the f are you calling? Are you out of your mind? Eventually, the coach and his soft spoken quarterback even began to speak the same language. I hear you cussing Brad, I like it. A little cussing in him. Gruden rubbing off on Brad, a little cussing. Gruden did rub off on both Brad and Keyshawn Johnson. Brad Johnson fade route, far sideline. Oh, caught! 50, 45-40, it's a touchdown, Tampa Bay! Brad became the highest rated passer in the NFC, and Keyshawn became a big fan of Gruden. Great call, great call, huh? Great call! Even when he wasn't catching the ball. Great call! The Bucks were in sync. And Gruden was the reason why. One more game ball for our leader, our yeah, coach. <laughs> Paid all kinds of money for the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gave up draft choices. We gave up money, but that's all right. I saw that Ford 500. Yeah, so. <laughs> Gruden won over the team and the town and taught them that a winner doesn't back down from a pretender. Shut your ass up. All oh, that screaming. Play football. Man, you a fake-ass John Randall. Shut your ass up. Screaming this Fake John Randall. Sorry, Brad, I'm gonna get you killed. Sorry about that. Actually, Brad Johnson was much safer than any quarterback who had to face the Bucks. Even football's fastest phenom was no match for the NFL's number one ranked defense. How fast is that defense, man? I can't even set up the door. Every opponent was fair game. For a unit that couldn't turn a deaf ear on a foul mouth. Can we, can we control Brian Mitchell, please? What's that? that language Brian Mitchell using. I mean, I like Brian Mitchell now, but that language. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God fearing man, is that it? Exactly. Divine intervention might explain why Derek Brooks was always in the right spot at the right time. 20, Derek Brooks, 10, 5, touchdown, Tampa Bay! The NFL's Defensive Player of the Year scored four touchdowns. It's so lucky, man! Why can't it be good? Why can't it be in the right place at the right time? Oh, not all the time! <laughs> in the divisional playoffs, the Bucks continued to be both lucky and good. Terrell Owens tries to make a catch. Ball deflects out of his hands. Taken by Tampa Bay, and they've got another turnover. Yes! Touchdown, Tampa Bay! For the third time in three years, the Bucks were heading to Philadelphia for a playoff game. But this time, Chucky would lead the charge. Seven 
Three score. Dropping back Brad Johnson. Looking Brad. Looking. Going over the. It's caught your ambitions. 35 to the 40. To the 45. To the 50. You go, Joe. You go, Joe. Allstott takes it to the house. And the Bucks take the lead in Philly. Settle down and play the game. Play fake. McNair dropping. Fires deep down the right side. Finish wide open at the five. Touchdown. Titans. The Raiders have just whistled it back down the field since getting it back in their hand. The penalties haven't stopped them. Nothing stopped them. The Titans have to figure out a way to stop them at some point. This guy is a beast. He's not coming out of the AFC Championship. McNair five. Dives for the goal line. Touchdown, Titans. Championship tomorrow. Right here. Right here. He's still in it. Let's go. Boy, it's like a shark feeding time. A shark tank. And they're smelling blood. Boy, the Eagles are in trouble. That is the second fumble by Donovan McNabb. This has been a suffocating Tampa Bay defense. Keep it up. Keep it up. Let's go. Keep it up. Come on. Let's go. So Tennessee, with these two fumbles, this is certainly not how you win a championship game. Put the pressure on. It's Oakland 27, Tennessee 24. The toughest man in football, right there. That's what I'm saying, Steve. That's what I'm saying. Take him on your back. First down, man, for the team. 327 to go. And that dropping for That's intercepted. And the 10. Touch. He's gone. Coast to coast. Nobody's going to touch him. Rondy Barber, 10. It's right now. They set the bet down. No more bet. Gannon yeah, looks left. Nobody up, but he can run for the end zone. Here he goes. Gannon into the end zone. Touchdown. There's a hand off to Crockett. Up the middle. Crockett goes into the end zone. Touchdown. Raiders. And Zach Crockett has run the Raiders to Super Bowl 37. And with that ends the dream for this season as the Eagles are beaten by the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Titans will not reach their ultimate goal, but a pretty doggone good year when you consider a one and four start. That's the final play of the ball game. The Buccaneers are champions of the NFC. Tampa Bay comes to Philadelphia and we beat the Eagles. How about that? We're going to the Super Bowl. on the NFC champions, our first ever NFC championship. On the road to the Super Bowl, only two teams remain. Now, they compete for a prize that only one can win. Stand up and celebrate and say hallelujah. Tampa Bay is heading to the promised land, San Diego, California. The silver and black are back in the Super Bowl.